to save our homes from the coal dust. We've been in Washington, we have been in Charleston, and what did he ask us, tell us up in Washington? Why don't you sell your home? You know, we have laws, we have to abide by them. If we come out here in this town and burn a burning barrel, we would be fine because it's against the law to do that here. Yet, this company, they're, they're looked over. When are they gonna do what's right? Never. Red plague, coal camp, train whistle smoke. Big and black rock, coal for coke. Pray to God my sun won't come down. Takes the old dirt road out of this whole town. Hold us in my soul, aching in my back. Only life I know, old coal town shacks. Cigarette in the morning, cold coffee afternoon. This is all very depressing. I pass through struggling communities and I have a hard time believing that the coal industry is the good neighbor they claim to be. The residents of Coal River Valley have suffered untold damage. Their homes, their community, their heritage, the air they breathe is polluted. The water they must drink is polluted. They suffer from yearly flooding. They've been forced to move off of ancestral lands due to effects of mountaintop removal mining. Their property has been significantly devalued due to the effects, the schools, the highways, the homes, everything is covered with dust on a daily basis. We sit below huge sludge dams that could wipe out the entire Coal River Valley. I think of the billboards over on the turnpike. Coal keeps the lights on. Coal, the future of West Virginia. Then I look up and I feel so deceived. Beyond these ridgetops lie thousands of acres of nothing and billions of gallons of coal waste all hidden from my view. I feel like I'm stuck in a bad dream. I'm going to drop in on Ed Wiley in Raleigh County. Ed used to work on a sludge dam here. I'm Bob, this is Head On. Ed Wiley saw that children at Marsh Fork Elementary School were going to school in literally toxic filth, endangering their lives every day going, next, going to school next to a god-awful Massey Energy coal preparation plant going to school every day beneath a, uh, a toxic sludge dam holding back something like 2.8 billion gallons of carcinogenic jello from the coal industry. Three years after I quit working for the mining companies and the contractor I was working for, I had a little country store down the road here. I started to produce and uh, feed and sort of just a little farmer's market thing there. And my granddaughter Kayla, she was attending Marsh Fork Elementary. And over the years, we heard her say, you know, you know, they was putting paper bags over the water fountains. And every now and then she would come home with a headache. And I got a phone call down there at that store. And it was a school and they said, come down and get Kayla. Uh, she's not feeling well today. So I went down and picked her up and I brought her here and brought her in the house and she she finally sat up and we went on outside and we had all the animals here and she come to herself and she was okay the rest of the evening. Middle of the day there I got another phone call from the school again come and get Kayla she's sick not feeling well. So down there I go and I get her and I signed her out but that day I noticed there was about 15 to 20 children had been signed out by noon. And that kind of caught my eye, but it still didn't strike home. Same thing again the next day. Got up, she was fine, you know, just always, you know, full of energy. Took her down, you know, she gets on the bus, goes, and I get a phone call again. It's about one o'clock that time. Come and get Kayla, she's really bad sick. She, she's, she's not feeling good at all. Damn, you know, something's up, you know, what's going on with her? And so down there I go and I got her and I signed her out and again
they were several names that day that kids were signed out. And I started flipping the pages back, five, six pages, and I seen that this was an ongoing thing at that school. That was my first sign right there that got my head ticking a little bit. So I, I got her, you know, she was sitting there. She was in bad shape that day. She, she was to the break of crying at that point, standing there in, in that office. And, and I had to get her out of there and got her in the truck. And when you pull out of the school, you have to turn right and, and all the mine stuff is over to the right of the road to come up the river here. And I looked over at her to make sure she had her seatbelt on and she did. I said, Possum buddy, you okay? And uh, that little girl looked at me and she says, Gramps. And tears were pouring in her eyes. I'll never forget it. She says, Gramps. She says, these coal mines are making us kids sick. That was like a sledgehammer hitting me upside the head. It hurt. It hurts today. Uh, I can't talk about it without being emotional about it. It hurt me bad to see that little girl. That little girl was special to me and still is. She changed my life uh, from what I used to be and a lot. Uh, this stuff was all flashing through my head as I was driving up that road. Everything I knew of my experience of being on the mines that could possibly hit them kids, you know, you know I said, damn that impoundment, damn the chemicals, damn, damn the, the shortcuts we took in designing things uh, to speed things up a little bit. And, you know, and it just I never realized, you know, that I was actually back there setting up something that was possibly going to kill her or all them little kids or community members. It was just, it was just a big awakening for me. They must speak out against unsafe conditions in the mines and also in the coal communities. They have to start speaking out. They have to find their courage. Ed saw this going on and they, they, they created a push to build a new school. Ed went to the steps of the Capitol and said, I'm going to sit here till Governor Manchin comes out and talks to me. He sat down and he got his meeting and then he found out that the meeting didn't have any substance about it. So Ed started walking. I feel this walk is going to be one big success for all of us. Not just the kids at Morris Fork Elementary, but Appalachia as a whole. And I want to thank everybody for any big or small part that they've had in this. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. The governor made a statement, our kids are our future, they are tomorrow. He said they are our most up importance. Our kids at Marsh Fork don't have a tomorrow. They don't have a tomorrow at all. And this is what my walk is about, to give these kids a good, healthy, safe place to learn so they have a future for tomorrow. And the governor needs to understand that. He, he needs to step up to the plate and do the right thing. And it's a sad day in West Virginia that we have to 